Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Reverend Heil Anderson brings us today's message on that day. Reverend Anderson will lead us in worship after our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive me all my sins and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit that I may amend my sinful life. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this last Sunday of the church year is from Ezekiel chapter 34, selected verses. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I'll rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries 
and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be their shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with the side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, and they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at His coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when He delivers the kingdom of God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For He must reign until He has put all His enemies under His feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under His feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that He is accepted who put all things in subjection under Him. When all things are subjected to Him, then the Son Himself will also be subjected to Him, who put all things in subjection under Him, that God may be all in all. This is the Word of the Lord. And the Holy Gospel is from Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will place the sheep on His right, but the goats on the left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, 
Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. for the message I share with you from the book of Malachi, as well as so many other references from God's word. Malachi chapter three. You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. And I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Dear friends in Christ, here we are at the end of the church year, the very last Sunday after Pentecost. And so what do we think about as we come to the end of a church year? We are thinking of the end of life, of our own dying, leaving this world. We are also thinking about the Lord's second coming, and he taking all believers in glory to heaven. My theme is simply on that day. Beginning with this thought, Jesus will return, as the scripture says, on that day. A day not known to us, but a day fixed and planned by our gracious God. A day repeated many times in the scriptures. Remember St. Paul preaching in Athens, Acts chapter 17. 
because He has fixed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom He has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising Him from the dead. Or we think of the angel's announcement just after Jesus had ascended. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you watched him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1. And then we hear the words of our Lord himself in Matthew 24. When he says, for this reason you too be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. As we're thinking about that phrase, on that day, it's a day promised both in the Old and New Testaments and repeated many times. And this promise is hope and it's comfort for the Christian. Jesus even gives the signs regarding the end of time and then He promises, but when you see these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And here the Lord means by redemption our final redemption, that is to be taken from this earth to be with our Lord eternally. And remember in that word redemption also, that little word redeem, which means we have been bought back, bought back from sin and death and hell, and brought back into our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus, on that day, will separate the sheep and the goats. We hear that phrase so often in God's Word. Again from Malachi 3, then you will return and see the difference between the righteous and the wicked. And again from Matthew 25, but when the Son comes in all His glory, all the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Again, Matthew 25. And God promises through Christ our Savior that all believers will inherit eternity. So as we look for the end of time, it is not despair, it's not the end, it's rather a whole new beginning, and what a comfort for us Christians who confess Christ as Lord and our Savior. And then as we stand before our Lord, again Matthew 25, then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God had already planned in eternity not only to save us, but to bring us home to eternity, to that kingdom prepared for us. What a comfort to the believer to know that Christ Jesus has carried our sins to the cross sent by His Heavenly Father and fulfilled the Father's will, and then in His dying, shedding His blood, paying the price for our sin, rising on the third day to show the victory over sin and death and hell, and to reassure us and give us the promise of eternity with Him forever. What a comfort. What a joy. What we have in this world is so short. Oh, we might live a long life, we might enjoy many things, but this world is only temporary. We're on a journey, and that journey is heaven itself. We're not there yet, but we have a gracious God who loves us every step of the way, who knows our struggles and knows our trials, who forgives our sins, who builds our faith and leads us forward from day to day. To Him be the power and the glory. In contrast, the unbelieving will truly be separated from God forever. What does the Scripture say? And these, that is the unbelieving, 
will go away into eternal punishment. Yes, there is a hell, and yes, there is a heaven. Heaven for those who confess Christ as Lord and Savior, and without Him, there is no relationship with God our Father and no hope. Dear friends, listen to the blessed comfort of our Lord. He says, but the sons of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. In that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What a description of utter horror and pain and agony. Separation from God. Yes, hell is real. Hell was intended for the devil and all his fallen angels. And the Bible says, into the eternal fire which he has prepared for the devil and all his angels. Yet, the unbelieving, these that will not confess Christ as Lord and Savior, will experience that separation from God forever. The promise of separation should then serve as a warning to us Christians that we not become complacent about matters of sin and judgment and that we constantly turn to our gracious God in daily repentance. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God, Hebrews chapter 10. Thirdly then, as we think about Christ's second coming, on that day, Christ's second coming is our hope. It's our comfort. A hope and comfort when life circumstances in this world seem so unfair, and so often they are. God never said that life in this world would be fair. Again, from Malachi, you said it is useless to serve God. What's the benefit if we carry out His requirements and walk in mourning before the Lord of armies? Certainly those who do evil are built up. Even those who test God get away with it. And sometimes we Christians then wonder, what about us? And contrary to what we hear on much of radio and television and about happiness and everything working out right, if we believe just right and we'll be wealthy and healthy and wise. Uh, it's not what the Bible says. Rather, we live in faith, knowing that those things here that are often unfair, they are also temporary. We have a greater reward in heaven promised to us. So we first think that Jesus came, first of all, to give us faith, to save us, to gain our salvation by living his perfect life in our place, by dying an innocent death, but carrying our sin, and rising in victory, and promising to return. That's hope. That's comfort. And the second coming of our Lord is the end of all things, and our being taken to glory, raised from the dead, and with glorified bodies, joining our Savior and all the believers in heaven, and all the holy angels as well. Hebrews 9. So Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time, not to bear sin, to those who are eagerly awaiting him for salvation. I share with you a statement from Martin Luther. He said, we have the promise and hope of heaven and the recompense and reward of our present misery will be so great that we shall rebuke ourselves severely for ever having dropped one tear or sigh on account of this content and ingratitude of the world. Why, we shall say then, did we not suffer even worse things? I never would have believed that there could be such surpassing glory in eternal life. Else I should not have so dreaded to suffer even worse things. That doesn't mean we pray that God send worse things into our lives, but we endure, and we endure by faith, as Dr. Luther reminds us. Then I share with you from another writer that I read quite often, uh, Max Lucado. It's in a book when, called When God Whispers Your Name. He says, isn't it incredible to think that God has saved a name just for you? One you don't even know. 
We've always assumed that the name we got is the name we will keep. Not so. Imagine what that implies. Apparently, your future is so promising it warrants a new title. The road ahead is so bright, a fresh name is needed. Your eternity is so special, no common name will do. So God has one reserved just for you. There is more to your life than you ever thought. There is more to your story than what you have ever read. There is more to your song than what you have ever sung. A good author saved the best for last. A great composer keeps his finest to the finish. And God, the author of life and composer of hope, has done the same for you. The best is yet to be. And so I urge you, don't give up. And so I plead, finish the journey. And so I exhort you, be there. Be there when God whispers your name. In the holy name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, amen. We pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We're happy that you joined us for worship today. Reverend Anderson is the pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Sunday morning worship is held at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. 
created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ.